All right, I'll go ahead and start recording. So a few uh, welcome and announcements. Uh, again, the Extension Master Gardener Coordinators Conference will be next year, September 14th through 17th. Um, there's a lot of information that has come out about the conference on the e-news blast, so please take a look at that. And if you um, don't receive the blast, let me know and we can go ahead and get that changed for you. All right, and it looks like uh, someone is letting me know that you all are seeing the presenter mode. So let me go ahead and switch the screen Hang on just a moment. Okay, let me know if that looks a little bit better, please. Okay, I think that's a yes. Great, thank you. All right, appreciate that. Okay. Um, are there any other announcements at this time? And if there are, you're welcome to unmute your phone, use the chat box, either way. Um, yeah, Nicole, this is Natalie from Tennessee. I just wanted to say, I put in a little bit of information about the online registration that, that is technically open for the conference in September, and that form also has information about hotels and that kind of stuff. I know that right now we're all kind of in the craziness of spring. But I'll go ahead and put that out there, and as we, you know, firm up plans and everything comes into place, then it'll be all ready for you. Thanks, Natalie. I can see that in the chat box, and let's see, any other announcements? Mm -hmm. And Charlotte yeah. is mentioning the National Extension Conference and Volunteerism. Charlotte, are you on the call? Yes, yes, I just dropped that in. That's just been announced. They haven't got it posted on the Facebook page yesterday, but the planning team met yesterday. Um, so that's the one to put on your calendar for 2021, and um, it is April 26th through 29th. It'll be at the Hard Rock Casino and Conference Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the National Extension Conference on Volunteerism. So hopefully we'll be back to normal by then and can meet face to face. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I'll uh, send out these links when we post the video online, and that way everyone can have access to this um, by email. All right, so today we've got volunteer appreciation on a budget. I think when we sent out the original email, the title was volunteer management on a budget. And then this sort of morphed into appreciation based on sort of what we're going through now and also gearing up for National Volunteer Week. So this discussion is actually, you know, it's meant to be an open discussion. We've got some standard slides and some ideas of things that you might be able to implement in your volunteer program. Um, but if you have any tips or resources that you want to share, please feel free to talk with us as a group. And several of you have emailed me your individual responses to the discussion questions. So you'll see those are mixed into the presentation. Um, and I've used a lot of the feedback that everyone sent to me and compiled that into the slides. So uh, moving forward. Some of the reasons why we appreciate our volunteers, of course, our volunteers help us meet our mission and our goals. Uh, many of us would not be able to reach the amount of people that we do on a consistent basis without our volunteers. As you know, Extension is built on relationships. These relationships uh, exist between Extension and the community, volunteers and the community, volunteers to volunteers, Extension faculty and staff to volunteers, and even to youth. So uh, we are built on relationships, it's very important for the work that we do. In addition, uh, by being a volunteer, volunteering helps people make a difference. If any of you are volunteers yourself, which I volunteer outside of Extension too, um, I understand how important it is to make a difference in the community and it makes me feel good to be able to volunteer and serve other people. Um, and also, as our volunteers maybe get older, go through life transitions, or even if they're younger, giving them meaningful work and uh, meaningful experiences can really help volunteers uh, with their self-esteem, uh, feeling like they do make a difference, and having that um, sense of community. You can get an opportunity to share knowledge and skills. Um, this goes both ways. Extension can teach volunteers, and then many of us are aware that we have volunteers that are experts. Um, we have some here that are experts in orchids and cycads, and so they know more than I do about these types of plants, and so it's wonderful to be able to rely on them for their expertise and knowledge. 
Of course, some other reasons why we want to show appreciation is it does help with the success of your program and overall retention. If people know that they're appreciated for the work that they're doing, they're probably more likely to stick around and stay engaged and report being satisfied with the volunteer program. And then if they do stick around, if they are engaged and satisfied, then perhaps by showing appreciation, we can get those volunteers to recommit year after year or for more activities. So a few stats to kind of get us thinking about volunteer appreciation. Um, the recognition toolbox, which I have a link to at the end of the presentation, says that the number one method for retaining volunteers is to let them know they are appreciated. This is something that each one of us can do. Volunteers can show recognition uh, between volunteers and even staff in the office can appreciate our volunteers as well. The volunteer recognition e-toolkit shows that people were more productive after having been thanked for their work. And of course, it's probably, um, we all know this intuitively, you know, if someone says thank you, you're more likely to continue helping or to feel like you're important or someone has validated you. And this is really important right now, especially with what we're going through in the world. And lastly, showing gratitude doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Uh, we did a little bit of scouring for ideas of things that we can do for master gardeners, especially when they come back to volunteer in the extension offices. So there are a lot of different low cost and um, easy to implement strategies that are in this presentation. We'll also send this out so everyone has a copy of the PowerPoint and the slides and some of the web links. So you can download templates and press releases and all kinds of good stuff. One of the questions we sent out for discussion was, do you celebrate National Volunteer Week and how do you do that? So National Volunteer Week is coming up April 19th through 25th. This is a great opportunity um, to let volunteers know that we appreciate them, especially with COVID-19 and the issues that people are facing with isolation and staying at home and decreased socialization. Uh, it's a good time to let people know that we're thinking about them and that we appreciate them and that we do uh, recognize the contributions of our volunteers. So would anyone on the call like to take a moment to talk about how you might celebrate National Volunteer Week? Okay, so we have a few responses coming in the chat box. Uh, volunteer spotlights on the state website from Wendy Wilbur. That's great. We're going to have that as a suggestion in a moment. Uh, Joan does an annual banquet, but nothing specific to Volunteer Week. Pamela uh, highlights on social media, one volunteer per day. That's excellent. Uh, uh, we've got send handwritten notes out to volunteers. That's really wonderful. Thank you, Julie, for letting us know about that. Um, so. Some of you do celebrate National Volunteer Week, which is great. Uh, Kara sends out birthday cards. Uh, ditto with the thank you cards and emails. That's from Elizabeth, Appreciation Breakfast uh, from Charlotte. And some folks don't. Um, some of the responses that I got back from the emails were that, uh, yes, we celebrate National Volunteer Week. No, we don't celebrate National Volunteer Week. I never heard of National Volunteer Week or um, didn't think about celebrating this, but I'm looking forward to hearing how other counties and other states do celebrate this. Uh, so again, coming up in April and uh, lots of opportunities to highlight your volunteers. Um, looking at the chat box again, we have Timothy Daly says county commissioners have volunteer recognition at one of their meetings. That's great. Some folks celebrate it at the extension office. Um, Esther, a thank you certificate with a small gift. And I'm gonna read these um, responses from the chat box just for the recording so those that can't see the chat box can hear everyone's responses. Catherine says, special events in a different setting they will enjoy. Eva gives out free plants and cookies. Uh, we also have, we've done fun candy treats. Yep, we're gonna give you some ideas for that. Annual banquets and um, 
more opportunities to recognize volunteers at meetings and with county commissioners. Okay, so the other thing that many folks let me know is the, the uh, recognitions and the volunteer banquets are a huge component of National Volunteer Week. So we were gonna uh, talk about some ways maybe you could do some volunteer recognition remotely and also really celebrate the volunteers when we all get a chance to come back to our offices and, and work together again. All right, so some ideas of what you can do during National Volunteer Week. So some folks will do a very short campaign. Um, it could be one day or it could be the entire week. It could be formal or informal um, with each volunteer or online using social media. A couple of really great suggestions would be since many of us are kind of you know, working remotely, writing articles, things like that, you could come up with uh, press releases that you send to the media to highlight volunteers. There are templates online, as Wendy and some of the others suggested, highlighting a volunteer hero. Uh, this is an example from a, a few years ago where we highlighted a volunteer here in Hillsborough County in co coordination with Hillsborough County government. It was posted online and received a lot of coverage. Um, some of the templates for National Volunteer Week include social media posts and hashtags and verbiage that you can copy and adapt to your particular needs and volunteer situation. E-cards, I've already received a few e-cards from my Master Gardener volunteers, um, letting me know that they're thinking of me during this time, so this would be a great time for us to send e-cards to our volunteers as well. And again, along with that appreciation dinner or brunch, that, those are some of the ideas that Pat and Sherry uh, both said, along with many of you in the chat box, that they do offer an appreciation dinner or brunch throughout National Volunteer Week. Of course, uh, we're gonna have to think about some other opportunities um, at this time. So here are some resources and they're included at the end of the presentation. Uh, Texas A&M has a great little toolkit. It's just a few pages, but it has a sample press release that you may adapt to your, your specific county. It has ideas on quick, easy, and inexpensive um, volunteer appreciation ideas and social media posts and hashtags and quotes that you can use and adapt. So I'll include this at the end of the talk and I will send it out by email. Purdue also has an example template and packet similar to this one, so they're both included in the resources section. Okay. And there's a question in the chat box, where do we find the templates? The templates are located in this presentation, so I have a link to the templates, and I will send it out by email to everyone on the listserv. If you don't get it, email me personally, and I'll make sure that you get it. And um, you can also take a screenshot when we get to the resources page if you wanna do that as well. Okay. So the second thing we asked, what are the top things you do to appreciate your volunteers? Uh, we got a lot of responses in, so they're intermixed and to this presentation. Again, don't forget to think about National Volunteer Week. It's a really great opportunity to highlight the volunteers in your program, um, let the media know about the work that your volunteers are doing. And personally, I feel that now with COVID-19 and um, everything that's going on, I think promoting volunteerism is, is a very good thing to do right now in the world. So um, we have that week that we can really create a campaign and get the word out about volunteers. Um, now let's move on to recognition. So recognition can be something that's done in many different formats. And so you all sent examples um, from awards to dinners to uh, logos and things like that. So we're gonna discuss those. And there's many different ways that you can appreciate your volunteers. And again, when they come back to the extension offices, I think it's uh, important that each and every one of us really takes the time to show our volunteers how much we care about them and we appreciate them and we're glad they're back. All right, so Rebecca in Indiana, she reminds us to be timely. Um, volunteer recognition doesn't have to just take place at annual events. You all know this, but it's just a good reminder. 
uh, they should be frequent, you know, catch people doing good, talk to them and let them know you appreciate the work that they're doing. Be specific if they're working on a specific project, maybe they responded to a client email and copied you and the response was fantastic. Send them an email letting them know, hey, your response was great. I'm going to save this for my future reference. Thank you for being at the help desk. Um, give feedback year round. And we, we do a lot of formal recognition events with conferences and annual awards and banquets, but those informal opportunities are just as important. So Sharon mentions that she provides a shout out to her volunteers at monthly meetings. So from what I understand from Sharon's email, and Sharon, if you're on the call, feel free to unmute your phone and chime in. But Sharon will highlight whenever they have business meetings or monthly get togethers, she'll highlight the specific contributions of Master Gardener volunteers. Um, I tend to do it whenever I give a presentation. I always thank the volunteers that are there helping me with setup and registration. Also, if you're doing a garden work day, you could possibly talk about the volunteers who have contributed or worked on a specific area. There's many opportunities to really mix in uh, volunteer appreciation throughout the year. Uh, Nezra, she publishes each volunteer's name and contribution in the monthly newsletter. So do many of you do that as well? So a few people say good idea. Yeah, we have a section at the beginning of our newsletter that's sort of like a you know, uh, what's going on and what's happening, and there we'll put the kudos and highlight the volunteers in their specific contributions. I really liked uh, this idea that she gave us um, for a couple of reasons. Sometimes with volunteers, you know, you have a few people that are doing a lot, but then you also have the people that are the behind the scenes. And other volunteers may not know what they're contributing to the program. So it really helps people realize that Everyone's contributing in their unique ways, and even if they're behind the scenes, it's important to give them the recognition that they deserve. Um, so it sort of promotes that egalitarian idea that everyone is contributing, everyone is helping, and here are the ways that even the folks that you may not see as often, they're still here helping us with our program. So Holly Thorpe uh, says in the chat box that she uses the volunteer management system and she puts shout outs on the homepage. That's an excellent idea. Any of you who have a volunteer management system, it's another great way to express thank yous right on that homepage when people sign in. And a few folks, um, Sharon in particular, also mentioned that you can do your annual volunteer celebrations, but their office does an annual celebration for all volunteers. So not just master gardener volunteers, but also 4-H master food volunteers and many others. So that's kind of a neat way to get the volunteers together from the whole office. All right, so I appreciate um, those, those comments and the feedback that was sent in. Another way we tend to appreciate our volunteers through recognition are service awards. So here are some examples. Uh, Sharon has many different categories. Uh, we can do volunteer of the month, our end of the year awards, outstanding volunteer, outstanding new volunteer, most hours, best attitude, behind the scenes. Um, I'm sure you can think of some others or perhaps you already have some others, but awards, certifications, um, these are all additional ways to appreciate volunteers through recognition. Uh, in the chat box, another comment from Joan. Joan says that she doesn't necessarily shout out specifically by names, but more by projects. I would worry that I would miss someone. Um, that's a really great point, Joan. Uh, my program assistant and I, when we do certain projects, we always have like a list and we're writing down who was there so we don't forget. Uh, sometimes like when, when I do our end of the year thank you and uh, banquet, I might actually send the presentation out ahead of time to a few folks and, and ask them, hey, take a look at this. Let me know if I missed anybody just to make sure that I can get everyone's name on here. Uh, so uh, Sarah asks, how are these awards chosen? And Sarah, I'm not sure. That's a really great question. I don't know if Sharon is on the call. Sharon, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Okay, could you could you answer Sarah's question about how these awards are chosen? 
what we have is um, a nomination process. So we have a nomination form that goes out to all the membership, all the volunteers. And so the, the award winners are nominated from the whole group. Um, when all the nom I collect all the nominations and all the nominations are given anonymously. And then I give them over to a, an award selection committee. So it's, uh, they're nominated by their peers and then chosen um, by their peers. Thank you. That's a really great idea. All right. And uh, someone is asking if you could share that form. So if you feel it's appropriate to share, you could send it to me and I can let other folks know it or send it out when I send out the presentation. So let me know if you'd like to do that. And thank you again. Sure. I can. Would I send it to you, Nicole? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll compile everything and send it out after the webinar. So that way uh, we can make sure everyone gets a copy of it. All right. So thank you again for sharing, for contributing that to our question. All right, um, and Joan, I know Joan is on the call. She, like many of us, do link the service awards, uh, emeritus, and honorary designations. Of course, that is a form of recognition if you've been with the program for a certain period of time. Something you may not have thought about is, is um, tailoring projects to the volunteer. And what I mean by that are, uh, you can recognize people's personal work styles uh, by giving them a time-based project and projects by interest. And so two examples that I dealt with is uh, one of my Master Gardener volunteers uh, is a retired engineer. So he really wanted to work on projects that had a defined beginning and defined end, something that was like an ongoing maintenance project. He was not interested in that. So his satisfaction went up when we gave him the projects that he really I was looking to work on based on his time and availability. And that kind of helped with our episodic volunteers, um, maybe people who work from, um, who work full time as well. And also projects by interest, it sounds a little funny, uh, but we have some folks that are retired teachers that really um, prefer not to work with youth. And so making sure that you're matching the project to the volunteer's interest is a way to recognize them. Make sure to include everyone when you're giving recognition, whether they've contributed an hour or many, many years. I think we've talked about this on past uh, webinars where we do tend to focus a lot on length of service, um, but we need to remember the folks that are just starting out or new volunteers or maybe the people who are just contributing a few hours here or there, but they're helping with significant projects. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm going to go back to the chat box to read a couple of different responses. So Julie recognizes the person with the most hours at the monthly meetings. That's really great. Uh, lets people know who's contributing and what they're doing. Uh, Mira says our nomination forms are online on our website. Selection is made by committee. Excellent. Rebe Rebecca conducts an annual volunteer interest survey. They included questions about um, their interest in things like baking, creating programs, and other ventures so they know who to reach out to for what projects. That's great. Kim sends out a free survey monkey survey asking for their nomination per recognition category. It's quick and easy. Uh, Mira, we recognize the outstanding EMG for each county and for the state. We have an honorary EMG outstanding projects of the year in several categories. And does a little Unseen Heroes Award at the annual banquet. I like that idea. Uh, we always have the Unseen Heroes, the people that work behind the scenes. They are kind of cutesy. I have an MGV that finds little things at thrift stores and she makes them into awards. They are kind of silly, something a bit different than our service awards, but just as meaningful. And that's important because it doesn't have to be real formal. It doesn't have to be expensive to be meaningful to people. All right, and uh, Holly asks, how do you recognize both the folks with the most hours as well as the ones who only give just a few but important hours? If anyone wants to discuss, you're welcome to discuss. Uh, the way I would answer that, Holly, is making sure that people are verbally thanked in front of others um, as they're working on projects, uh, working to include them in the newsletters, um, adding them to the projects and listing that in annual banquets, um, 
presentations, uh, just kind of getting the word out of the different tasks and things that people are doing and uh, contributing to. If anyone else has other ideas, please go ahead and add those to the chat box. Okay, so a couple of other suggestions that came in on the top things you do to appreciate your volunteers. Meals is a really big one. Um, I joke that one of my colleagues actually asks on the interview question, like after he's done interviewing Master Gardeners, what is the best thing that they can make? Because that food is so important to our get togethers and our potlucks. Um, but one of the things that I implemented this year is um, instead of maybe giving somebody something or a certificate, I've been treating them off site to coffee or dinner or lunch. And the volunteers really seem to appreciate that. I don't know if very many others of you are doing that. If you are, you're welcome to add feedback to the chat box, but taking a volunteer out for dinner um, or a cup of coffee is really nice for that one-on-one -on -one time and appreciating what they do. You could also give them, you know, like a famous recipe from the Master Gardener program, uh, let them know they're the recipe for success. And one of the things that we started implementing about two years ago here at the Extension Office in Hillsborough County is our volunteers are essential for helping to maintain our teaching and demonstration gardens. So we started quarterly, quarter, quarterly workday parties. We'll change this up. We might do subs, we might do pizza, we might do cupcakes one day um, or ice cream socials. And then we'll work in the garden. And after that, we bring in the food and we take care of it. And we literally just socialize for a little while and have fun and really enjoy each other's company. Uh, so Kim is asking if I pay for that personally. I use program funds to pay for that. Um, it's usually not too expensive. I have um, this. This is another way that I think is good for office culture. We have other folks in our office that work with Master Gardener volunteers, and so I've asked them to help contribute to the quarterly quarterly workday parties. So they'll usually split the cost with me, which is nice as well. And I put on here, make accommodations. Um, we have a, a volunteer who has special dietary restrictions. You may have someone who's gluten-free. And it may seem little, but if you make an accommodation based on their you know, dietary restrictions, that's actually uh, validating people and making them feel that you appreciate them. So. When we do pizza and we have folks that are gluten-free, we get the gluten-free pizza to make sure that they have something to eat as well. So Sarah says that the picnic is a potluck. She provides the, the meat. Ava does garden tours and an annual picnic. Anne does lunch after all of the garden work days. Food and chatting is great. And Sarah hosts a picnic at her house every year. It sounds really nice. Um, so people are doing really great things with with food and uh, volunteer appreciation. All right, in the area of communication, many of you emailed me things that you can do just by email or writing. So you wanna be personal, um, let people know the contribution that they made. If you can do this face-to-face, -face, that's fantastic. Of course, now we're doing a lot remotely, um, but it's still really important to, to always thank the volunteers. Pat Williams in Florida, he, he jokes that, you know, to the volunteers, did you know this is National Volunteer Appreciation Day every day? Um, so he makes it a point to always say thank you to the volunteers uh, by email or face to face. And again, Sharon, uh, Sharon let me know that she recognizes the volunteer time and effort by responding to all emails in a timely fashion. That's another way of letting people know that you appreciate them. So. Um, that is a really great tip. Uh, some of you mentioned this already, uh, putting information about volunteer recognition on the homepage, adding a section to the newsletter to recognize volunteers' efforts, highlighting particular volunteers on your website or on social media. Don't forget you can call people. Now is a great time to make those phone calls. It doesn't take a lot of time, but it shows you care. And Ava suggested that even support staff could help. So if you are one person and you have 120 volunteers, perhaps you have support staff in your office or even another Master Gardener volunteer that might be interested in helping to recognize people or give them a phone call. So great suggestions. <clears throat> All 
So ironically, now is a good time to slow down and have real conversations, talk to your volunteers, make sure people are doing okay. Uh, we have a lot of discussion about using Zoom to continue with horticulture training, webinars, all kinds of things uh, for volunteers remotely. But don't forget that you could also use Zoom as just a way to check in with people right now and see how they're doing and give them an opportunity to get on the call and just talk with each other and see each other's faces and participate still. Uh, listening to your volunteers, letting them express their opinions, concerns, input, and ideas, making them feel that they're heard. Those are all ways to show appreciation through communication. And Ava suggests recording a thank you video and posting and sharing that to the volunteers and she actually said that she was on leave in France and she recorded a video and sent that out to her master gardeners and of course if um, someone can't make it let them know that you miss them and that you know you you hope to see them in the future and that they can make another event so Anne has a comment in the chat box we have a small group calling everyone on the roster right now and have gotten great feedback. That is fantastic. I, I, that makes me happy to hear that. I'm sure the volunteers can use it right now. All right, a couple other things you can do to show appreciation through communication. So share appreciation from someone they serve. For example, if you as the coordinator receive an email um, hey, this person gave an excellent presentation on native plants, or this person really helped me solve a problem at the help desk. Forward that email to the volunteers. Uh, many of the organizations in our county that um, hear our presentations from our volunteers, they'll send a thank you card to the office. I will usually scan that thank you card and send it to the presenter or presenters so that they can see um, that the card came in and that their efforts are appreciated. And if you have surveys that get turned in, you know, after class and people share uh, feedback or testimonials, you can always type that up in a letter or write that in a card and send it out to the volunteers. <clears throat> All right, so a couple of other comments. Anne says, uh, find those MGVs that love to chat and they will be great for the task of calling other MV MGVs and they enjoy it too. So again, you don't have to do all this alone. And of course, you know, the, the task today is not to have this giant to-do list of stuff to do um, at the end of this webinar. It's just to give you some ideas of ways to think about appreciation. No National Volunteer Week is coming up and understand that people might need a little bit more of this right now. And I think it's, it's on us as coordinators to make people feel appreciated. Okay. So another uh, way that you can show appreciation is through training. Many of you sent in examples of advanced trainings that you provide, um, but also don't forget maybe non-HORT topics. So some of the things we're doing in our extension office is teaming up with our FCS uh, staff, and we're teaching mindfulness and stretching before we do a garden work day, a little lesson on the importance of proper hydration, uh, we've talked about microplastics quite a bit, especially here in Florida, but some of you may be along the coast and um, or even if you're not along the coast, microplastics is an interesting um, concept to really introduce your volunteers to. Waste to energy, how is um, the garbage that's around your community um, used for energy or recycled? And then you can go into other topics, resume writing, diversity and inclusion how to increase diversity and inclusion or be respectful in your programs, digital photography, internet safety, healthy eating, and how to use Zoom to give horticulture programs. Those are a couple of ideas. If anyone else has ideas of non-hort topics, feel free to put them in the chat box and we'll send them out to everyone. A few people um, submitted that they write letters of recommendation and support for Master Gardener volunteers. Uh, you may have volunteers who are going to be trying to go back to the workforce or have changing life situations. So a letter of recommendation can be very important uh, from a volunteer coordinator. And this is why it's a good idea to kind of keep records of what people are doing and how they're contributing because 
you can give real specific examples of projects that they've done, hours they've completed, how they made a difference. And um, studies show that employers or potential employers really do consider volunteer experience when they're considering candidates for a position. So in our case, um, here in our county, we've had some volunteers that have become substitute teachers, um, some that have worked in uh, local youth programs, so those are examples. You could provide a reference, and then of course, if you have a volunteer who gets a job or has a promotion, send a note of congratulations. It's another way to let them know you appreciate them. Okay, going back to the chat box. Uh, one idea for a non-HORT presentation would, or non-HORT training would be how to improve your presentation. That's really good. Um, being an effective presenter, maybe customer service. That's a great suggestion. Thank you, Michelle. Leslie says, a lot of our MGVs enjoy trainings on how to use computer software. We are sometimes able to get these taught through the local library. Great suggestion, Leslie. Um, I usually will team up with my district IT person and we'll do an internet safety and passwords and security training for Master Gardeners. So great idea, um, teaming up with people, always a good plan. And Kelly, uh, Kelly says, one or half of one of my training days is now EMG Share Day. They sign up to teach or co-teach something for 15 to 30 minutes, something they are experienced or knowledgeable in. Um, that's really great. I think that would be kind of fun to attend that class. It, it would give me something to look forward to that half day, just seeing what everyone wants to share. And the Western Region says they have not done this yet, but they want to get a garden yoga session going. Uh, so all great suggestions. Um, again, for us, sometimes people might have mobility issues. So we did like stretching. So just be aware of that when you're integrating um, different kinds of physical activity. And Yen says sometimes your recommendation uh, work too well and they resign because of a new job. Uh, that could be a problem. So something to be aware of. But of course, we wish we wish success for our volunteers and we want them to do a great job both for us and in the community. Also brings up a great point that people aren't always here forever. And so, um, you know, it, it's our responsibility to have a good, a good opportunity environment for volunteers. And if they can leave our program and do better and move on to something that they really enjoy or work professionally, that's good too. Okay. And Jet says, some of these folks are our best ambassadors. And I agree, they can actually help to recruit other volunteers. <clears throat> Okay, so a few quick ideas for acknowledgement. Um, you could ask individuals or groups to write a um, idea about a memorable moment or a specific volunteer. I think this could be important for office culture. So for example, if you want to create a culture of appreciation among faculty and staff in your office, then perhaps they could write a note or sign a card letting volunteers know why they appreciate them. Um, circulating a card around the office helps volunteers feel supported and it actually goes through everyone's hands when they sign the card and they make a note. That means a lot to people. So um, don't forget that acknowledgement can come from you as the coordinator, but it can also come from the staff that are in your office too. And then if you do any youth programs, maybe get some prints from the kids or have the kids do handwritten cards or posters. Reporting, which we don't often think about as appreciating our volunteers, but um, reports do validate their time and effort. So um, reporting can go both ways. We can send examples of our reports, and I know many of you do, um, to your volunteers, let them know what impacts they're doing for the organization, tell them about the organization, uh, why we appreciate their efforts, and explain their contributions. Okay, here's some ideas and I'll send the presentation out to everyone so you don't have to make a note of all of these, but a couple of um, things that I really wanted to point out. Uh, some of you, uh, Ava has a sunshine committee, so sending birthday cards, get well cards, and mention that you know she's reaching out to folks in her program. Those are all really great personal ways to let people know that you care about them. I put an example there of our birthday cards. We do little postcards and we send them out. Um, I have a member of our, our team, our Sunshine Committee as well, who will make sure to get these in the mail on time to each volunteer to celebrate their birthday. 
it's an inexpensive thing. It costs maybe about $100 to get hundreds of these things printed um, through a local print shop, but it means a lot to the volunteers when they receive them. Discounts at local nurseries, car wash gift certificates. Uh, Brenda has several suggestions. She uses koozies and tokens, all sorts of cool stuff in her Master Gardener program. Uh, Sherry Dorn suggested logo items. Um, you could give a Master Gardener hat with a little tag that says hats off to you. And again, going back to that volunteer recognition during routine events. If you have an Arbor Day event, um, make sure to thank the volunteers. Thank the people at workshops and presentations. Let folks know who your volunteers are and what they're doing. Um, Sherry gives, uh, says garden tours. So Master Gardener volunteers provide garden tours to other volunteers. That's another great way to acknowledge people. And then here's some that we may not necessarily think about, but indirectly they also show appreciation. So giving someone additional responsibility and flexible volunteer opportunities, um, asking them to co-present at a conference, inviting them to give a presentation. I think the next one is really important, accommodating personal needs and problems. When you do that, um, you are acknowledging that they're important and you care about them. Making thorough pre-arrangements. Um, so if you've been a volunteer, you know how important it is to have the instructions uh, available, the directions on where to go, knowing where to take a break or eat a snack. Um, who is the staff person that you can talk to? Uh, do people treat them well and with respect and make them feel welcome? And is there, are their efforts worth their time? You know, is their time used wisely? These are all things that as coordinators we do that indirectly appreciate volunteers. You could pay registration fees, offer scholarships, provide transportation. I know when we do uh, field trips here monthly, I'll drive the van and um, let as many people come on the van as we can fit and let them know, hey, you just sit back and relax. We're going to take a moment and um, have fun and leave it up to me. I'll take care of it. It's your job to just hang out and relax and have a good time. Remember to write down the impact, work alongside them when possible, and provide opportunities for socialization. Uh, we've talked about this in past uh, webinars, but those opportunities for socialization, especially now, uh, are going to be very important moving forward. People are going to crave time to spend with each other. They'll miss that face-to-face. -face. And many of our volunteers join our programs because they meet friends and it gives them an opportunity to hang out with like-minded people. So um, my suggestion would be, you know, as we get through COVID-19, really focus on appreciating people and providing those opportunities for volunteers to socialize because we've all kind of missed it for a while. All right, going back to the chat box. Um, we have Sharon says she wants the list of ideas. Uh, thanks, Sharon. These all came from different folks and some resources. Uh, something we do is, uh, Howard says, allow a master gardener to honor another master gardener. That is a really great idea. Um, I bet that really creates a, a real culture in your organization of respect for each other. So uh, very good. Uh, let's see, we've also got send an email to the group with family matters in the subject line uh, when sharing news about deaths and illnesses. I ask people send notes and put the best contact info in the email, very good. Uh, Joan gave jackets to all the volunteers. It's not an annual presentation, but they had the funds. Uh, they also reimburse for seminar, seminars or workshops. We ask people to write a recap for the newsletter. I like that idea too. And Teresa is planning an online virtual coffee hour for Master Gardeners next Monday for socialization. Very good. I can't wait to hear how that goes. I think that's a great, a great idea. All right, so speaking of those trends, many of our activities, as you know, have been canceled. So people are going to be missing this. Um, maybe rather than canceling all events, try to postpone as many as you can and reschedule those. Even if folks can't make the rescheduled date, I think knowing right now that something has been rescheduled kind of just makes people feel a little bit better um, because so many things have been canceled. So go ahead and postpone events. Try to reschedule trainings. 
maybe use this as a time to write your own success stories or include this in your annual reports of how you've gone through this and you've been able to engage volunteers or uh, what personal testimonials have you heard from people about the Master Gardener Volunteer Program and um, how it's helped them during this time? And remember to recruit a volunteer or uh, support staff or someone to help with this uh, with with the recognition. Of course, if you ask a volunteer to help, then you're also demonstrating that you trust and you appreciate that person. You're giving them an opportunity to recognize others, which is something else that we've seen in the chat box. So different ideas. Um, going back to the chat box, Nezra says that she is planning on something like that with two to three MGs presenting topics that generate discussion, thinking of calling it coffee and tea with MGs. Wendy says a proclamation at the county commission for volunteer appreciation week and have the volunteers come to the commission meeting. That's a really great idea. There's a template for the proclamation in the resources section. So you'll all get a copy of that. And another uh, comment, uh, the coffee hour is awesome. So very good. Yeah, I think we'll, we could all probably try that in the next week or so. All right, some quick fun ideas. When they first come to start volunteering, you could ask them, what is your favorite candy? What is your favorite coffee or drink? Um, makes it easier for you to surprise them later with what they actually like. And some other ideas. Uh, again, you'll all get a copy of this presentation, but these are all very inexpensive, quick things that you can do to show appreciation for your volunteers. So pairing a small item or candy with a, a funny pun written on a card or a gift tag. So here's some examples. Thanks a latte for volunteering. Take note. We appreciate you if you give them note cards. You could give out mint plants or mint candies. Thank you for your commitment. Your help meant so much. Uh, it's been a real treat to have you as a volunteer. A couple of others. A note and a box of donuts. We don't know what we would have done without you. Um, chewing gum, thanks for sticking with it. Of course, lifesaver candies could come in handy. Uh, here are some other ideas. Uh, cupcakes, you take the cake. A wine glass filled with candy. A toast to a job well done. These are some of my favorites, the fortune cookies. We are so fortunate to have you as a volunteer. You could give one to every volunteer with a note. And these are very, very inexpensive ways to show you appreciate people. Uh, a package of post-it notes. Thank you for sticking with us and making such a difference in the lives of people. A ruler or a tape measure. It's easy to measure the difference you've made in our group. Uh, we've got some other ideas from Anne. Look on Pinterest for cute and cheap ideas. Agree. And Pam, you, Pam says, not directly appreciation, but during this crisis, our volunteers are leading the charge on reviving victory gardens and growing more food this year to give away to their community with free plant stations throughout the county. Hope to highlight in a newspaper article and show how MGs are contributing during COVID crisis. Excellent. Very, very good. Yeah, a lot of people are working in their yards. Um, we're seeing that a lot. We still are getting plenty of questions at the uh, extension help desk for people asking about what to plant and how to have a, a successful garden this time. So, yeah. Uh, you could do a pat on the back. Here's an example where a coordinator um, traced out her hand and gave everyone a pat on the back for the hard work that they've done. Here's another one called a penny saved where they had a volunteer who worked over a thousand hours. So they collected a thousand pennies and put them in a vase and gave that as a representation to show how much that volunteer had done. And of course, if uh, the volunteer didn't want the money or the pennies, then they could donate it to a charity. So I thought that was a really good idea. Surprises in the mail, especially now, you can mail out postcards to say thank you. At the end of this presentation, there's some links to templates and printables that you can download for free and send to folks. Um, bookmarks, uh, Sarah Bailey sent an email that uh, she has different gemstone levels for the volunteers and she recognizes people based on their efforts. So there's lots of cool ways that you can uh, use puns and little things to say thank you. Send them popcorn, send them a puzzle. You're a big piece to our puzzle. Thanks for popping in to help. Thank you for all your time and you could give them a plant. Um, remember that small gestures work 
and uh, it, it really does let people know that you care about them. Uh, Sherry Doran mentioned that she gives out the gold stars, and here's another idea. You could place each name of a volunteer um, and put them on display in a public area. Maybe this would be a great, great opportunity when people come back to the extension office. Sorry about that. And um, there's a template online on how to create a helping hands appreciation tree. If you would like to download that, you are welcome to grab that from the resources. So let people know that you appreciate them. Send an email blast. Uh, one person said that they send a card to the family thanking them for sharing the volunteer. Um, you could send a Thanksgiving Day card to the volunteer's family letting them know that you appreciate uh, the contributions of that person and a few others, um, giving out honey jars, thank you for being a volunteer this year, hosting a talent show. Um, this isn't necessarily HORT related, but uh, kind of similar to the sharing um, that someone mentioned in the chat box. You could even have at your annual parties just a small talent show where people could share their gifts and their gifts might be they grow succulents. Um, or perhaps they play an instrument or are a great um, painter, uh, different things. This is something that a group that I volunteer with outside of Extension did, and I really appreciated it because it got me thinking about people in ways that I, I never knew that they had these talents. So I thought that was a, a really clever thing to do. All right, so we've got a couple of other suggestions in the chat box. All right, oops, sorry. Again, looking at Pinterest, um, sharing ideas, very good. So many of these ideas came from you. Some of them came from the resources section uh, that we're including at the end of this presentation. If you have more ideas, then you're welcome to send them to me to compile for the group and I can send them out. I do wanna say that you know if you are a master gardener coordinator and you already appreciate and, and let your volunteers know that what they do is important then kudos to you because you're making a difference in the community and it takes a lot of work and time an emotional investment to really get to know people and, and let them know that their effort is appreciated and of course if you have you know, lots of volunteers and everyone has their particular interests and skills and time commitments and availability. It's a lot on volunteer coordinators to do that effectively. So we appreciate everything that you're doing, especially during uh, this time and trying to keep people engaged. So over the next few weeks, perhaps you can make a commitment if you haven't already done so to spend a little more time thinking about volunteer recognition and putting some of these ideas into action. It will help with your volunteers' self-esteem. Um, it's just real personal, and it can help you know, with the fundamental needs of recognition and support, and you'll have maybe more retention of people being satisfied and happy with your program. So here are the resources that we've mentioned in the presentation. Um, we will send the PowerPoint out to everyone afterwards. And if there's any other ideas or questions or comments, you're welcome to unmute your phones. We also have some tips that people have sent in, so I'll put that in a PDF and send it out to everyone as well. All right, and hearing none, um, we'll go to an open discussion. If anyone wants to talk about how you're working with volunteers during COVID-19. I will go ahead and stop the recording and um, we can chat about that for a little while.